In a Melbourne hotel, city dwellers see an art exhibition which comes from the remote parts of Arnhem Land and the Northern Territory. The carvings and paintings are all the work of Aboriginals, most of them collected by a woman, Mrs. Dorothy Bennett. A pelican by Maraluca. Some of the work comes from the East Arm Hospital where patients are taught handicrafts. Miss Bennett has traveled thousands of miles in the last 10 months collecting the work. The net profits of the sale are used for the advancement and welfare of the Aborigines. This painting is called Diver Duck Dance. The artworks show two distinctive styles. Painters in Northeast Arnhem Land use orchid juice to cover the surface on which they're going to paint. The paintings from Port Keats have a varnished effect achieved by covering the surface of the bark with red gum boiled with water. Prices range from five guineas to a hundred guineas for the paintings and from 10 shillings to 30 guineas for the carvings. Native artists selling their paintings for the benefit of their race. It actually documents our history, our culture, the things that happened in the past and also for the future. And people think, well, how could art be a written language? Do comparisons. We're all human beings all over the world. You have the Egyptian hieroglyphics and the word hieroglyphics from the Greek, hieros glyphiros, sacred carvings. And they're only being deciphered now, still being deciphered, but they documented the Egyptian history all the way through. It's a written language in art. Similarity to that is South America, the Inca, the Aztec and the Mayan culture. Theirs is also an art form of hieroglyphics which documents a history which is still being translated. Uh, a little bit closer to us in Australia we have the South Pacific. For instance the Polynesian structure, of the Maori especially. The carvings, uh, the tattoos we call moku on the face and on the arms, on the body. They are also documenting their iwi or their clan groups, the whole structure of who they are and where they come from. So art is a written language, depending on the person who understands that art as a written language. Also, art documents our belonging, our belonging to the land, the importance of the land, because in Aboriginal culture, it's not just the land, it's what's on the land and in the land. We become as one with the land. So we understand the animals, the, the plants, uh, the birds, the fish, we have to know the whole structure. We know how they breed, how they migrate, where they live, time to hunt. So everything is a part of that whole structure that we have to understand. And so art helps document that whole history. Aboriginal art is extremely sought after on the international market. In his work, each painter tries to depict certain dreams which belong to him. But if he wants to illustrate the dreams of another person, he must ask permission. Through dreams, they gain access to that other parallel world in which, since the time of creation, gods, spirits, and men have lived together. Their actions there are what modify and affect the world of the living. Painting merges past and present and enables man to connect with the beyond. These days, most use commercial materials like watercolors and oils on canvas and frames, but some still continue to do their work using natural pigments painted onto tree bark. Dots, circles, crosses and spirals symbolize places and pathways within dreams. They are a kind of religious map the artists also depict dreams related to fantastical beings. 
Other paintings portray totemic animals, fish, crocodiles, turtles, duck-billed platypi, kangaroos, serpents, pictures which are inspired by the ancient drawings painted on sacred rocks. Acrylic art is a new development for Australian Aboriginal people, whose ancient traditional painting was only previously done ceremonially in ochres, on rock walls, bodies, artefacts and in the sand. The modern movement began in the early 1970s with Outback Community School mural projects in the central desert at Papanya and Yundamu, which introduced new materials. The artists began to make more permanent artworks on boards and canvas, using an existing system of symbols to illustrate their country and dreamings. Soon artists from other communities began to produce acrylic artworks. The popularity of the art quickly grew, and with the potential of extra income for the artists, their numbers flourished. Traditional ceremonies and cultural practices are a continual source of inspiration for the creation of magnificent artworks full of spiritual and cultural significance. A new style has emerged from the desert of Central Australia into the contemporary art world, where the power and beauty of the works and images have driven the new art movement of the century. A groundbreaking exhibition on Aboriginal art has opened in the Australian capital, taking visitors on a trip through time along the famous Canning Stock route. The 1,800-kilometre stretch was first surveyed in 1906 by cattlemen looking for a path to move their livestock across the vast outback of Western Australia, a region which had been both a home and inspiration to Australia's Aboriginal people for tens of thousands of years. What seemed to those European surveyors and explorers as something rather desolate and empty um, is in fact a landscape with the most extraordinary richness of uh, stories, of significant places, of biography, of family connections. The aim of the exhibition is to show the richness of desert life. It tells the story of the Canning Stock Route's impact on Aboriginal people through the works of senior and emerging artists and the stories of Aboriginal elders. Artist Mervyn Street heard about the droving days from the old people he met along the route while working as a stockman. Yeah, I love drawing, drawing, and I love doing history. And not only all that, doing history, but I'm always doing some work in school, that kids out, telling story. This collection of colourful and varied Aboriginal art shows that within the arid desert, a rich culture continues to thrive. The remotest part of the nation, Australia's contemporary Aboriginal art movement is on the move. A new exhibition in Sydney is showcasing its richness and diversity. Curated by Hetty Perkins, the daughter of the late activist Charlie Perkins, the exhibition aims to engage mainstream Australia with Indigenous cultural heritage. The artists behind the works will also feature in a new ABC documentary filmed by Samson and Delilah director Warwick Thornton. Connor Duffy reports. The wonderful thing is that the diversity, you know, some artists are making very contemporary interpretations of stories that are, you know, 
a millennia old. You know, it's there at the ancestors' stories. Deep in the New South Wales Art Gallery is one of the biggest and most varied collection of Aboriginal works ever assembled. Paintings and sculptures from north and south, east and west, city and country, are all on show, painstakingly put together by curator Hetty Perkins. It's happened before where artists will paint, you know, they can't see actually what they're painting, or they'll paint off the canvas and onto the floor, because it's not so much the frame, the western frame, as it's represented by whether it's the marketplace or the size of the canvas they're painting on, that's, that's not important. It's the process of painting, the process of remembering, the process of thinking, the process of invoking country, the ancestors, becoming part of that cycle of, you know, literally from the ground up, those stories passing through to you and onto the surface, and then onto your children, and onto the children that you won't know, the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Recording, you know, marking your time, and marking yourself as part of that culture. It's as if the painting you see comes out of the body of the land, and these are the first Australians. They belong to these places that they are painting. It is part of their identity, it is part of their affinity with country, and they are asserting this ancient primacy in relation to Australia. And we need to acknowledge the importance of this great culture. I'm a Western Islander lady, but I live at Yindamu with my husband because my, I'm also a Walpuri woman too. I want to share all my stories through the, the paintings of Guadier in front of me. They're all about uh, uh, bush duckers. The story is just n not just a drawing or painting, it's a uh, story about bush duck. It's, it is um, bush medicine too. It's um, two carpet snake traveling from west to east and made a fing river. The well known river in the Northern Territory is the Fing River and while the red ones are cockatoo feathers, black cockatoo, while they was traveling, the snakes was traveling, they was wearing it and singing love songs and that's why they was wearing all these red, black cockatoo feathers. Because I just want to show and um, share all my stories in this on the canvases because I uh, I want to show to others outside from my country to overseas too. Thank you, Elizabeth, and we will take this um, film of you and the pictures to Europe to my country. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Naprula. Naprula. And this is one of Mary's many paintings that I have. <laughs> Mary, where, How are you? where are you from? Ulara. Yeah, for, for Bush Canvaset. Bush? Canvaset. Danvaset. Toga. Damper seed. Yeah. Tamba. Damper. Yeah, Tamper. Hold on then. Tamper. They grind it up and make damper. So this way, I come from two places. I've got a big family. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Some of them are uh, Torres Strait Islanders and some of them are from Australia. And, and this, this beautiful painting that you do. This one here is from Northwest Arnhem Land. Northwest Arnhem Land. Yeah. And what is this painting about? It's a river system. Is, has it got a name, that river system? Basically, it's from my country, from my uncle's country. Your country, we buried him up there. In that country? In that country. So, you remember him when you do these paintings? Yes. That's a beautiful painting. A lot of people reckon it's like snake skin, so. It does look like snake skin. It's beautiful. <laughs>